Fire Radio. We're just yeah, jumping into chance. it. We are, we're man, because... In. No waste of time. I mean, time. Here's, the, here's the thing, right? So we're going to jump into Chance Craven, Honor Supply. We're going to go down this long, long road today, man. I am excited to have you on. And I'm going to start the Likewise. conversation by, by talking about you for a few minutes. So you're going to have to bear with me. Um, but you, man, so I had my eye on you long ago through Instagram, watching what you were doing, taking pictures, a lot of just uh, unbelievable stuff that you were putting out. High quality resolution photos documenting the fire service. Fast forward to November of last year, I'm at the Joey D Foundation training out in Long Island, New York. I bring my daughter with me. We're going to see friends after training for Friendsgiving, right? You know what Friendsgiving is where you hang out, you know, if like friends oh, yeah. get together and have Thanksgiving like a week early, right? So we're doing Friendsgiving out in Long Island. So I asked my daughter, my wife wasn't feeling well, so she didn't make the trip. She didn't come with us. My other daughter didn't want to make the trip. So my daughter Paige wanted to take a ride. And then we we're going to go to my friend's house, have a cocktail, share of Thanksgiving and get home. We go to Joey D., Walk around a fire ground. I got a lot of friends there, a lot of guys that I've gotten to know, people that I look up to, all sorts of different people there. Um, an incredible event. And as I'm walking the fire ground, I come across a, a guy with cameras strapped to him. And I shake his hand and I say, hey, I'm Jeremy. And you chance, hey, man, yeah, I know who you are. I said, I, you know, I recognize the name once you told me and, uh, and so on. Because I spend a lot of time on social media and I'm watching who's making an impact on the fire service. Um, fast forward, we have a great conversation, one, two minutes, that's it. You know, very nice, very cordial. And then uh, I say, uh, thanks, man, and I go on my way. And my daughter and I are walking, and uh, unbeknownst to me, you snapped the photo of myself and my daughter as we were walking away from you. Um, then yep. you posted it on social media like a week later. I open up my phone in the morning. I come across this photo of Paige and I. It literally brought me to tears. And you documented something so important to me. And your words were very strong. I'm getting emotional now. I want to get this out of my system before we get into the rest of this podcast. But you captured something that was a moment for me that I'll never forget. And, and the emotion behind that. Um, and what you said in your comments was something to the effect of, you know, um, it, it, you know, making my daughter a part of the conversation uh, and, and so on. And it just was so important to me because my children are my everything. It's why I do what I do. Um, but I often don't get noticed for things like that. It's not often I get noticed. Like, I'm usually the guy making connections, putting people together, trying to make a difference. I'm in the background. I know I'm out front a lot. I talk a lot. I'm out there. But I don't often get captured in a moment like that that is documented and then something you say the the kindness the kindness of your words the way you delivered that instagram post will forever stay with me i'm forever grateful to you i mean that forever and that grateful like that is the uh, reason why we do it because when the camera came out you didn't act any different you didn't do anything different it was we just legitimately caught an authentic moment and uh without the words it would have meant something but then you put a little thought and attention in it too with the words and truly honor you that in the midst of all this chaos that the fire service is you taking the time to still be a father and a husband and recognizing you for that not just the face of national fire radio that's that's jeremy would not no that's a husband that's a father that's a firefighter awesome. and then that is the host of National Fire Radio. So, yeah, that was – I'm glad you got to experience that because that is why we do it. Well, and so – and and we're going to go down that road, right? But I, I just want to start off by saying thank you. Um, what yes, you do does matter, and I, I we've seen that firsthand just within the last, like, two weeks, uh, and I want to hop in and talk about that for sure. But you have done some incredible things for people through that lens and then your generosity and care. But – Ultimately, this is done because of the compassion and love you have for the fire service. You're capturing moments, and people take for granted. Like, 
growing up in the fire service, buffs, right? Buffs are more popular than they've ever been before. Guys that buff the fire ground, guys that take photos. I mean, you have guys from the New York City lore years ago, Michael Dick and people like that, that have captured moments in the history of the New York City Fire Department, Boston Fire Department, you know, all these these big departments. You have fire buffs that capture the moments of the generations. I love the faces and the people behind the stories, and you are capturing those photos. And those photos speak to the individual, not just that person that you take the photo of, but it's also people that are looking at it. And and what comes from that is super powerful, man. Super powerful. It is. And, um, and I think the unique thing about where we are now is those buffs have taken phenomenal portraits over the last hundred years we're just one of the first people to capitalize the strength of social media that they didn't have 50 years ago. And so by no means are we the first person really documenting firefighters. We're just the first person to start to build a brand around it, call it Honor Supply Co., and really focus on the firefighter. And uh, I think if social media were around 100 years ago, it would be a different story. We would be following in the footsteps of a lot of other people. but buffs have historically captured a ton of awesome things. We're just now following them and posting it all to social. Yeah, but I, I think it's I think it is different because the reason why those photographers were able to capture what they did in yesterday was because yep. they had this unconditional love for what was happening in front of the lens. So anybody can go out and take photos and anybody can go yep. document but do you have a passion and drive to make sure that you get the shot that resonates the best with what the message is and what's happening? And that can only be done through a true artist, somebody that is dialed in, understands it, has 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 empathy for it, has love for it, and a passion. Because what you're doing is for the people you're doing it for. It's not yes. for yourself. I mean, you're getting your own gratification out of it and, and fulfillment yep. through doing it, but it's based upon the individuals from which you capture. And that's like, I mean, today is March 26th. Today will go down in history as the day that the bridge collapsed in Baltimore. There right. will be thousands of photos of mm-hmm. the destruction there, the chaos. But who is there focusing on those firefighters right now? Who is the person capturing of multiple reports, what a couple saves already this morning? Who's documenting that? Who's documenting the people that are reporting to the job before shift change? So guys are coming on. There's going to be these crazy moments. Like there's such a story this morning of service that could go on to educate people, honor people, recognize people for what they're doing. And uh, to your point, there's a lot of people behind cameras this morning that for various reasons, they want to show the craziness and the chaos. I'm over here like, how fast can I get to Baltimore? What PIO do I have to talk to so that I can focus on the individuals that are responding to this thing? Um, That is, I think, something that does make us difference. Why? For me personally, it is something that I believe that what we focus on grows. And in a world of negativity and social media is awful, Man, there are people today that have spent years training for this moment. As you and I know, Mm. fire departments aren't just fires. They're all hazard things now. The majority of people showing up to this and their careers have not trained for a cargo ship running into a bridge with a collapse. But they have been doing things for the last decade that no one knows about in silence with their head down, grinding, getting better, dive certifications, cold water, all the way down to like plunge tubs that they get in so that whenever they have to jump in that water this morning, it doesn't take their breath away. All of that is stuff that I want my sons to be like, man, that's a man. Like that's the type of guy that I want to be like. Instead, we sit back and we're like, oh, look, P. Diddy got raided this week for child pornography. All the news is going to go to him. So that's what little kids grow up looking at and thinking about. No, there are so many iconic, legendary men that they're not holding this in their hand, taking selfies all day. So we don't know about what they're doing. And I want to go document that to honor them. Yes. But there's so many like underlining layers to this. I want them to be recognized. I want them to know that they're appreciated. I want them to know that, man, I'm seen today. 
even though they're not doing it for glory, we all have an innate desire, even the post with you and Paige, like you feeling recognized in that moment. 100%. Man, the fire service is this thing where all day it's like, well, shoot, does it matter? Like my pay just got cut, mandatory, overtime, callbacks, all these varying things. We get in our heads and mental struggles, and that's a whole other conversation. But the power of this one photo today, where I promise you one of those firefighters prior to that call going out this morning was just having a shit day. 100%. Life is chaotic. Things are messed up. And so they're going to go to this and they're going to come away from it, just like friends that went to Surfside. And life doesn't change just because you went and served. But to be recognized for serving, it, it does something for the person whose photograph was taken. It is that, man, my wife doesn't understand why I go to trainings a hundred days out of the year. I work a hundred of the other days and I'm only home a hundred. Well, it's because God put something inside of me to serve. And I know that a moment like this is going to happen, not if, but when. And then after this call, there's going to be spouses, dads, moms, mothers that are like, that's my kid. That's, that's my husband out there. Now I get it. But if they're not seen doing it, it's literally coming home. Oh man, we ran the craziest call yesterday that no one's ever going to realize and there's just this disconnect between honoring the people who are doing good and we've complicated it the the photos like this simple way to be like hey here's an image that now shows you what your spouse is doing or your loved one father son like it's yeah i want to be the, there to highlight the people that are there and what they do the photos that you have been posting are powerful Right. From somebody that's in the fire service, when you look at a silhouette or a photo mm -hmm. and up close where you have incredible emotion behind the eyes for you to be on the other side of that lens, sometimes you have to disconnect. But I can only imagine how it affects you while you witness the triumphs and the sadness that people are going through. Now, fortunately, I think a lot of what you capture are triumphs personal yep. triumphs, uh, conferences, places where people are working, pushing themselves, the emotion that goes in behind uh, gratification and, and satisfaction and energy and excitement. You're capturing all of that. But there's also going to be times for sadness and solace and things that happen on the fire grounds every single day, the rescue grounds, where we work, where we operate. How do you pull yourself away from that, or can you? So I think it's, it comes with just mental strength and it is knowing that, Hey, this is a job where bad things happen. This is a world where bad things happen. And uh, there comes a responsibility in being a hundred percent authentic. And uh, so when we show up somewhere, there's emotions to capture, but there's a tasteful way to do it as well. And uh, on a nerdy side, I use a lens called a 70 to 200. It's my favorite lens. So I can document a lot of things without being like right up in someone's face. Yeah. Most even portraits we take, people don't know that we take them. And so that's the kicker. Absolutely. There are moments that you're like, wow, this, this sucks. But I know that someone else is going to grow from it, from the training opportunity, the lesson learned in it. Um, we ran a car fire the other day where unfortunately the guy had gotten stuck under the car. Firefighters show up, don't realize that he's still underneath it start spraying it with water. Oh, wow. He's underneath it. We will never share those photos. Right. But for that particular department, man, what an incredible training tool to be like, Hey, here's something that happened. And so for us, there's a lot of moments that they're unfortunate. They are emotional. They're heartfelt. Um, but there's purpose behind why we're doing it other than selling to the press and getting notoriety for, Hey, we were in the middle of this chaos. I, <laughs> There's so much here. I, I So truth be told, the backstory also is you and I spent some time together in t uh, Texas a couple weeks ago. Yep. Um, and the reason why I'm driver. kind of- Thank you for the five stars. You, thank you. <laughs> I, I do appreciate that. You did give me a ride to the airport um, earlier than I needed to leave, but I wanted to take that ride with you, take you up on that offer to drive me to the airport from the conference um, because I wanted to get to know you. Um, there is something about people that I, I flock to. Um, I think when 
when there is a sense of truth and transparency, people that are doing things for the right reasons, um, they shine to me. They stand out to me. You are a guy that I wanted to get to know. Uh, from that moment in Long Island, New York, capturing that moment with my daughter and I, to fast forward uh, in March, we're at the Joey D conference in Texas, and you and I got to literally spend the weekend together, and yep. I got to watch what you do. Um, you and I had some incredible conversations, but I'll tell you that that's what I kept going back to and I do today while we're talking right now. I think about all those things we talked about. There was some pretty deep stuff, man. That Absolutely. we talked about. A lot of similarities between you and I in what we're looking at and how we're navigating this space um, and so on. And so I guess I want to ask you, where does it come from? I mean, I know a little bit of your backstory. I know that you were a career fireman at one time and so on. You have a beautiful family and so forth that support you. But Thank like you, that sir. foundation, I mean, a lot of what you're doing today is 100% giving back. Like myself with National Fire Radio, I get satisfaction from what I do, and it's that personal drive that I need to push myself to be better. I think yep. you, you feel the same way with what you do. But I'm curious, though, the foundation from which you came that has allowed you to focus on the betterment of other people. I mean, most people don't put others before them. So uh, for me, as on the other side of my office, I have a huge banner that hangs up. I was very fortunate to uh, grow up with a grandmother that believed in Christ and mm. taught me Christian principles. And uh, a lot of searching as a young guy came from finding fulfillment, finding things that gave me purpose. And I grew up in a, I think, somewhat unique environment. My parents did the very best they could. Um, but I was always taught to like find the good. The old Mr. Rogers saying of like find the helpers. Even in all the crap, it was always like, hey, let's find good. And then now going through some counseling and doing different things, I realized that I grew up in chaos. Yeah. And so chaos is comfortable to me. Mm. And I have spent a lot of time very fortunate to travel the world, Japan after the tsunami, Haiti after the earthquake. And I've seen a lot of bad things, fire service too, but I've also always seen good. And uh, my relationship with the Lord... And uh, there was a situation in Dallas where a couple of police officers were actually killed by a sniper. And uh, in that moment, I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, and this is in the midst of like all the craziness that's going on. Everybody hates law enforcement and firefighters and all this other stuff. And law enforcement, unfortunately, has it way worse than firefighters. Yeah. Um, but it was like, man, why do we always wait for these people to die before we honor who they are? Like, these are good people that are doing great things. And here we are in 2016 and these police officers just got killed. Like, why aren't we highlighting what they do and who they are before this bad stuff happens? And so I start to pray about it and I'm like, man, God, somebody should do something about this. And he's like, yeah, you're right. And I'm like, ah, oh, well, I, I wish somebody would stand up and do something. And it's kind of like a knucklehead, like, yeah, come on. And yeah. there was a moment where I'm flipping through scripture one day and Romans 12, 10 is be devoted to one another in love honor one another above yourselves. And so just the structure of that sentence, it's like, well, man, I have always chosen positivity, always chosen like to love other people, see the best, not being naive to the fact that negative things don't happen and bad people aren't out there. Like that's a fact. I don't ignore it. I address it whenever it comes there. Again, we just choose to focus on the positive because what we focus on grows. And so if I'm gonna go out and love people, it was like right here in front of me was this clear instruction of, hey, honor others above yourself. Well, man, how can I do that? And uh, having had friends in the fire service, friends in law enforcement, just some very basic conversations. Hey, man, how can we honor you? Well, one, I don't want honor. Like, that's not why I do this. I'm not a hero. I don't refer to myself as a hero. Like, I just don't think that anybody knows what it's truly like on this side of all the negativity and the press. And so it was kind of like, okay, well, my background is advertising and marketing, taking photos. What tools do I have where I can go out and honor others? And it was quickly realized that like this, this right here, the camera, we're all carrying it around with us. Other people are already using it on scenes to document all the chaos and the negativity. What if we just kind of switched our perspective and said, hey, let's focus on the people. Let's honor them so they feel recognized. 
let's we we say that every photo has three purposes recognition education and then empowerment and so the recognition is that like hey i see you jeremy i see you as a husband i see you as a father i see you as these different people but then education like even in the post i wrote about you it was hey the statistics of divorce and broken families in the fire service is astronomical Instead of focusing on that, let's focus on this dad that's actually taking the time to love his daughter and lead her. And then the empowerment side of it is, I'm not the only person that feels this way. There are other people that want their firefighter, their law enforcement, their paramedic to feel special, but how, do, how are they supposed to honor them? And so by creating these pictures, it really is like, hey, here's an album of 100 plus photos. Grab the photo of your loved one and say something nice about them online grab a photo of your crew member, post it and say something nice. And so it is this like, I don't know, it's it's a lot of ingredients that came together. Um, but that's kind of the verbal vomit version of the foundation and why we do it. And so enter honor supply. Yep. That is, so what I've learned is people want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. For most people, that's why they join the fire service. And I could go out and build a personal brand, Chance Craven, very fortunate to have done that in some capacity, but I don't want this to live and die with me. There are other people that are out taking photos for free who uh, don't have the same support or struggle financially. And so to start to build this mechanism where it's like, hey, Caleb, if you want to go take photos today, we pay you $300. The only thing is you can't watermark them. We're going to upload them all for free. Well, man, I was already doing that. Like I was going to do it. So if you give me money, like that's awesome. Cause now on a firefighter salary, I can still do something on the side and help you grow this thing. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the, the banner in which we're flying. And then the flag on my head, that is the honor supply co logo. The H obviously stands for honor. The bottom line being the foundation and the longest of the three lines is everyone that came before us. We're literally standing on their shoulders because of the trust they built with photos. You and I talked about this. Like a lot of what I'm doing is because you were one of the first people to introduce media into the fire service and say, Hey, it's not this bad thing. And then the middle line is where we are today. The top line is the future of the fire service and really focusing on honoring that. And that's kind of the lens pun intended of what we view everything through is, Hey, before we post this, you talk about capturing bad things. Sometimes does this honor the people that came before us? Does this honor the firefighters that we're doing life with right now? And does it honor the future of the fire service? I mean, we've captured a lot of images where a helmet's on backwards. People are on a smoky roof, not clipped in. There's just some ignorant things happening that we'll never share. Even if it's the coolest photo ever, because it's not honorable. It's going to get someone Integrity. in trouble. It's going to get mm -hmm. someone chastised. So honor supply co is a, it's a unique thing. Very still much an emphasis idea and something that's growing, but I'm excited about it. It's exciting. I mean, when I know the fulfillment I get when I'm doing things for others, but I don't want to come off on this high horse, right? That's yep. like, Oh, it's all about, it's not, I mean, it is, but there's also that internal fulfillment. You mentioned fulfillment before. You know, you grew up with fulfillment and yep. you found your way in which you can provide a, a, uh, I don't know, a way about you that, that feeds who you are, right? We need this, right? I think it's really interesting is that you, you listen, you were, you were looking and seeking and through your faith, you come to find through listening. Mm-hmm where you're going today and i look at what you're doing i look at the impact you've made now uh just within the last few weeks justin daly the yep. firefighter that you captured a photo of at a training conference who literally the next day found out he had a uh horrible medical diagnosis he sent you a quick message that just said thank you for capturing that photo and I, i'm not trying to paraphrase the yep. uh that situation because it was super powerful and how you explained it and then what you did with that talk a little bit about that like what that meant capturing a photo i have to think that that's probably one of the bigger moments you've had 
and the work that you do and what you've been able to do with that. Yep. You want to talk about fulfillment? You want to talk about fueling the mission? I mean, I can't imagine how you slept for the first few days <laughs> when that all went down. Yeah. Um, so Daly was a firefighter with, or is a firefighter with St. John's County, Florida. And uh, he uh, was at the Orlando Fire Conference. And I've actually photographed him previous years as something called the Ancient City Fire Conference. Um, but it was a situation where documented again in Orlando, the weekend after Orlando, we're in Houston together at Joey D and, uh, just get this text. Like you were actually standing right there whenever I first got it. And it was, Hey man, it's Justin Daly. Just want you to know that what you're doing is more than a photo. 72 hours after you took this, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. This photo may be the last photo of me ever in gear. And it was like holy smokes like i know that there's purpose to why we're doing things but these gut checks realities of like you never know what the photo means to someone else i know why i'm doing it i'm doing it to honor you but i had no idea the impact that the photo of you and Paige would have on you Mm -hmm. i never knew the impact whenever i was photographing justin at this hoarders class where tim kled is like pushing him neck deep in smoke is going to be one of the last photos for him that like, then whenever you start to peel back the onion, and Justin and I have talked about this now, so we take the photo. The moment that he was experiencing some medical things leading up to Orlando in that photo, he comes back home, ends up in the hospital, and was at first told that he had a stroke. And so he's at the hospital with his wife. Justin's a very smart guy. He knows a lot of medical stuff. He's like, well, okay, I hear you, but I don't have a lot of the other symptoms that follow the signs of a stroke. So crazy. Wife leaves to go get the kids. Doctor comes back in. He's preparing for another test. And the doctor says, hey, we're not going to have that test. Why not? Well, you didn't have a stroke. You have a brain tumor the size of an orange in your head. Wow. And he's like, holy smokes. So now he's in a room all by himself. Doctor leaves, calls his wife. She instantly knows that something's wrong because he's choking up, can barely talk. She turns around. A friend goes to get the kids. And in this moment, I'm going to try not to cry about this. Like Mm. In this moment where Justin's in a hospital room by himself struggling with this news, he tells it in his own words like, ah, well, I'm going to start flipping through these photos. And he lands on this photo that we've all shared now. And he's like, man, this one image, I suddenly remember putting my kids on a fire engine. I suddenly remember the best calls that I've gone on. Like my entire life in the fire service flashes before my eyes. And it's like, hey, I got this. Like I can beat this. And so like none of that emotion and story has anything to do with me because I never knew that that's what it would mean. I never knew that that's what it would lead to. It really is that just say photo is the simplest way to honor everybody. And you never know what that photo is going to mean. So it's, yeah, it's, that was a, a roller coaster of a week. We ended up posting his story within five minutes of posting it. Jonathan Clementine from the Yard Foundation reached out and was, and we've never talked. Short message. He's like, hey, let's do something to help this guy. I'm like, well, that's not my arena. That's yours. And within a week from the time that we posted it, to before Justin went in to get his surgery, he got a check for $27,343 to help him and his family with whatever they needed because of a photo, because of people seeing it, relating, feeling compelled to do something. And that is where, like for me personally, again, being a man of faith, so many of us struggle with identity, purpose, and these various things. In scripture, it says that Jesus came to serve, not be served. And I think that's where... For me and a lot of people that are like-minded, especially in the fire service, the fulfillment that can't be explained with you traveling the country and speaking, a firefighter showing up after not sleeping all night to another call is the fact that we're serving. And whether you believe in Jesus or not, I think it's one of those things that we all have this innate desire, this gratification that if you go out with the wrong reasons and do it because you're pompous and arrogant, man, you still feel empty because you're not serving others. It's self-fulfillment. But whenever you go out with pure intentions, you said trust and truth and transparency. If you go out with the right reasons 
and serve people. There is a innate gratitude in that, a fulfillment that nothing else that I've experienced in life matches that type of of fulfillment, gratitude, sleeping peacefully at night. Like it's, yeah, whenever we serve others, a lot of good things happens. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Yep. I've only recently understood this. Mm. And, uh, you know, and I think a lot of people struggle with this. And um, Jeremy used to be about Jeremy. Jeremy used to focus on Jeremy. And maybe throughout those years of my life, I needed to. I don't know. But when you start to find, I don't know, when you, when you start to find more in others, when mm-hmm. you start to give instead of take, I promise you the fulfillment is 10 times the reward. It is. Um, I'm learning that every single day as I get better as a human being. And I think with maturity comes clarity. I've said that many times in, in my programs and when I talk. I think immaturity comes clarity. And I'm starting to understand that more and more. The time that you and I spent in the car on the way to the airport was a moment that I will never forget. Mm. We talked about some pretty deep stuff. We talked about what we think the future might look like. We talked about opportunities. We talked about wins. We talked about losses. Yep. You and I had only met. <laughs> and we were like all in in the conversation. And that doesn't happen with people that you don't cherish yep that's why like this moment for me right now i'm kind of just quiet listening to you because (laughs) i'm overwhelmed by this conversation you you do a lot for others and i just want to make sure that you get what you need to and that is some of that balance that i've had to come find is that as you say yes to everyone yep some of that starts to struggle. And you and I talked a little bit about saying yes and then being able to say no at times. Mm -hmm. And the no is difficult, especially when you've uh, subscribed to this way of giving. I'm not, not trying to paint us as, as martyrs. Like that's not what this is, but I was a guy that took, I was a guy that was all in on me and needed what I needed. And then even as a husband and father, it took me a long time to really understand the importance of that and how much more fulfilling it is to give to my wife and give to my kids instead of just constantly taking. And I think that is the... I'm rambling. I don't know. I think that is the unique balance, though, that is worth noting in this is like, okay, Jesus did come to serve, not be served the worldly version of that is it's better to give than receive. And like most people have heard at least that and we can uh, compartmentalize where we give. And so, especially in like the first responder world, well, babe, you don't understand. Like I'm going and giving all day. Yeah, but you're not giving anything to me. You're not serving me. Hey dad, I wish you didn't miss T-ball. Oh son, it's a training so that if a bridge collapses, I can be there. Okay. I get it, but you miss T-ball. And so like, there is this super unique balance of and I think what you're saying with immaturity brings clarity. I'm very blessed to have been married 12 years now. 12 years ago, had a bridge collapse this morning. I would have woke up and told my wife, "Bye, Lee, I'm going to take photos." Well, man, you selfish pig. I'm not selfish. Like, what are you talking about? Like, there's people up there that are that. and like just been an ignorant fool. But through a lot of that immaturity, relationship growth. And uh, just having a wife that does support me, but she also challenges me. And I think that is something that in the fire service and our families and faith, we can get in these moments of, uh, hey, I know that you're saying it's about service. I know that you're saying it's for other people, but I'm going to call you on it right now. Like, I think you're doing this one for you. And so having those people in our lives that, and it's very important with social media not to listen to everyone. Like you and I have talked about like that. There's so many opinions out there that will tell you that what you're doing is wrong, right, and different. But man, if you can find those three to five people, your spouse, your kids, two or three peers, that I think that is the long-term pillar, pinnacle, like I don't know what word to use, but like gate to making sure that all of this gets done for the right reasons is that someone can come to us and be like, hey, Chance, mm, that one, that one's for you. And some of that's okay. Like, it's okay to do stuff for ourselves. You, like, 100%. I want, I want we that need to it. be known. Yeah. You have to. 
But you gotta be you gotta be good in your own life to be good in anybody else's life. Plain yeah, and simple. We operate out of an overflow. So if I'm a miserable dick at the house, I'm not going That's out right. and making any firefighter happier. I'm just taking photos. So yeah, yeah. There's yeah. again so many layers to this onion, man. There is, but it it comes with time, and and I have to think like that Justin Daly moment for you when when it all settled. Yep. And you had a moment at night where it's quiet and you turn everything off for a moment. There's got to be something just within that resonates with you. Like that worked. Yeah. That was a moment. Yeah. That is where, and like not to turn this into church by any means, but like for me being completely transparent in this, like I'm not hiding things. I'm not Mm -hmm. being ashamed of what I'm doing. The win for me is Justin coming to me and being like, man, I questioned some of this faith stuff. Even the brotherhood in the fire service, I had my doubts. No, I get it now. Like, I'm on the receiving end. And for me, this is the first time that, so since 2002, August 14th, a firefighter named James Dodder passed away in a motorcycle accident up north. He was a firefighter in the city of Spartanburg. I I was able to photograph James. After him, three other friends that I have photographed have passed away. All of those people, their spouses, significant others, someone in their family has said to me, man, I didn't realize that this was the brotherhood. I didn't realize that this was the fire service that I was told about. And in my mind, though, that's humbling. It's like, well, it's too late. Like you didn't get it before they passed away. Justin's this unique thing where James's son, Henry, was three at the time of his passing. I don't, I haven't spoken to them since. I don't know this to be true. This is kind of hypothetical, but Henry may grow up resenting the fire service because man, I lost my dad to it. Or you and I both know Muller, his son, Cole, Cole may grow up, man, the fire service took my dad. And you have these unfortunate situations where we wait too long to honor people. We use the hashtag honor before death because that's our goal. Justin Daly was one of the first people where like on kind of a big scale, man, his kids now know what the brotherhood's capable of. Yeah. Whenever he's walking up to the Mayo Clinic to get surgery and unexpectedly there's almost a hundred firefighters, they're outside their district, hundred firefighters that are there waiting on him before the sun comes up. Man, that's a kid that's going to be like, and I'll never forget when my dad had surgery and we came to the hospital and there was hundreds of people. Or a spouse now that's like, and again, this is hypothetical. I'm not saying that the Daly family's experienced any of this, but Mm -hmm. you have a wife that's like, we just got $27,000 from strangers, from Canada, from Alaska, from states all over the country because you're a firefighter, because of the service and the sacrifices you've made, because your transparency, other people just gave to us like, holy smokes, this is crazy. And so it was this surreal moment of this is why we do it. And Justin said in a post that it's more than a photo. A photo is the easiest tool. But again, it's you never know what that one photo is going to mean to a, a Jeremy and a Page or a Cole My, as listen, he gets older. Like it's Listen, I was on the receiving end and and as as you know, for me it was a moment that I'll never forget. Yep. And you're and the photo is one thing. It was the words that you put to the photo. Mm-hmm. And you said at the end of it, you said, you know, you, you spoke about uh, the situation. And then you said at the end, you said, I see you, sir. Yep. And to me, um, literally tears in my eyes when I read that that morning. It was early in the morning when I read it. And it caught me so off guard because mm. I didn't know it was there. Yeah, and I literally found it by flipping through the Instagram feed, and I'm like, I love Holy it. "Shit, that's that's me." Yep, and I'm like that, and it's our back, so like you wouldn't know who it was. Yeah, it was my me and and Paige, and we're walking away from you, and you just took a picture from the back of us, and it almost looks like we're holding hands. We're not, but we're, yeah. it almost looks like we're. And just this is my seven. Crossing. This is my seventeen-year-old daughter, and it was just a moment for me that I'll never forget. It literally reduced me to tears because you did see me. Yep. And, and to me, like you gave me a moment to pause and to appreciate my daughter even more than I do. Hmm. Um, and I do, my kids are my everything. 
And, you know, truth be told, like, I was so proud to show her around that day there and introduce her to everybody. And, you know, I treat my, my kids as people, and I make them a part of everything that I do because I want them to know conversations like this happen. People like Chance Craven exist. Like, I want them to understand that and to be a part of that. And we have to do that for them. Yep. We can lose our kids so quick to all the chaos in this world. But we have to be all in on them and have to make them a part of our day. We have to. And you captured that, bro. And that forever grateful. So anyway, it was that. And then just getting to meet you and know you and, and spending some time with you in Texas. And here we are today. And I just want to say that what you're doing does absolutely matter. I appreciate that. And the that. fact that Justin Daly can share that and he's here today to share that and, and to be a part of what you've done. It's just, it's that's just the beginning of what you're bringing to the table for the fire service, for the emergency services, for people, the healing that can come from it, the memories that are going to exist from it. I mean, there is a lot of bad in this world, but there is still a lot of good, and we need to capture it. We certainly do. And you just nailed it. Like, that's what you want Paige to see. That's what you want your yeah. other kids to see. Yes. And uh, there aren't, there, there are people telling good stories. Um, but especially in the fire service where daily there's so much chaos and negativity and death and destruction. It's like, man, we want to be that one light in that world where it's like, Hey guys, here's all the good. And, and we typically focus on it. Mm -hmm. Like when we go to fires, fires are amazing because it allows us to practice our craft and, yep. and get good at what we do. Fire is going to happen. We want to be there, but that's not the highlight. Like the highlight is after the fire. That yes. back step bumper talk, that back at the firehouse kitchen table, the shenanigans, the being there for one another, those that's the stuff that resonates. When you when you sit around with these guys that have been to thousands of fires, these OG guys from New York City and other, you know, urban interfaces where they go to work all the time throughout their careers, and I get to sit down with these guys, they can tell you a lot of the highlighted stories. What they really like to do is talk about who they were with. Absolutely. What happened in who they were with how they were able to conquer and overcome or, you know, these guys remember people and companies, the fires will fade and that, you know, you'll have your memorable fires, but like when you go to so many, it fades. It's the people you're with. It's the experience. It's that time on the clock. Those are the stuff. That's the stuff that resonates years later. Absolutely. And to be able to capture that. And that's what you're doing. And there's other guys out there are are capturing those moments that stuff absolutely matters that's the good stuff of the story and that's where i think you, you talked about time earlier and you mentioned time i'm starting to get that point now where there's a lot of people that reach out hey i want to go to these scenes i want to take photos i want to capture these moments too and uh a camera is not the most trusted thing on the fire ground and so i think there are a lot of moments that happen that aren't documented because even from buffs, like any buff listening to this, I would encourage you, like you have to build trust to capture a lot of the 100%. authenticity. And so if we go out and we just kind of like spray and pray and we're pushing this button and we're uploading a ton of photos. And again, we upload something that makes a firefighter look bad or unsafe, or they weren't following a specific SOP or SOG that gets them in trouble. Like you have now eliminated the ability to document those authentic moments that matter. Because the moment you come around the corner with the camera, you're going to get backs, you're going to get frowns and scours, and then, oh, well, firefighters are jerks. They never smile for the camera. And it's like, no, actually, you messed up. And if you just own it and you apologize, we could get to a different level. And then it is this, like, on the other side of the pendulum, well, man, those firefighters were smiling at that structure fire. They must be insensitive pricks. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, hold on. Let me educate you here. If my house is on fire and my wife and children are inside, I want the crazy SOB that's grinning the whole way here to be the first person in my yard. And, uh, well, why is that? Well, because, I mean, if any firefighter tells you they're not fearful of the beast, I would question their integrity. It's a scary thing. But I want the person that embraces that challenge and that fear. And whenever we start to show these moments of smiling firefighters afterwards, they're not smiling because they're inconsiderate of what happened. They're smiling because if they believe they were called and created to serve, not be served, 
they just got to serve you and the community that they took an oath to protect. And like they are smiling from ear to ear, not because your house caught fire, not because your loved one died, but because they just got to give 100% effort at doing what they believe they were created to do. And so those smiling photos, it's it's a shame that we've reached a point where it's like, hey, don't don't smile, don't don't take a photo here. Again, be wise, be smart. So, but it's man. nuance matters. Yes, yes. Like, and the, the the camera's the tool. Anybody can take breathtaking photos. Yep. Who can capture the photo and deliver it correctly in the moment in which it needs to be delivered? When I when I do all the national fire radio stuff, whether it's the apparatus innovation picture, just pictures of apparatus, I have to be super discriminatory mm. yep. about how I do it, what photos posted, do I include the department in the description or not? If I know that it's going to bring some heat, it's unwarranted. Yeah, it's they operate that way. How dare I go take a picture of something they do for shock value? put their name to it, now drag them into a conversation that they don't need to be a part of. Yep. But I did it selfishly to create numbers or a, 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 uh, metrics and insights. You have to have this way about you in which you understand what you're doing. There is an absolute art form to social media and doing it correctly. But this is why Honor Supply Co., National Fire Radio, this is why we have trusted communities because we are very – protective absolutely of the process in the people that we choose to include or choose to exclude yep and we're still gonna mess up like 100 percent. i'm not perfect there's things that i yeah. still do for a little bit of stirring the pot but i also yep. think sometimes we need to stir the pot absolutely a little bit. vertical yeah. ventilation if you want to get a bunch of clowns to emerge from the depths of the internet listen we cut roofs <laughs> it's what we do knock it off yeah. let's move on so but that is something that the other day yes i captured what i thought was a beautiful vent posted it to like honor these guys because it was textbook 100 percent. i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> after the fact talking to some of those guys it's like man i had to stop reading the comments i'm getting mad like it, it's now sh should i have, did i do something wrong did i hey I'm hold sorry. on whoa like don't doubt yourself and so there is this like i think follow-up to the conversation like you and i joked in the car about an unofficial chaplain there are people that will quickly post things and That's right. even this morning's bridge incident will be a great example of like, man, hundreds of thousands of photos. Like it blows my mind that in, before the sun rises on social media, we are watching this bridge collapse. Like mm -hmm. there's already clips of power going out on the ship and it coming back. Like news travels faster than it's ever traveled before. Sure. But what comes with these is the responsibility to think through, hey, before I post this, bridge collapsing am i thinking about the families of every construction worker that was on that bridge this morning do they need to see this bridge again eh, maybe not and i'm not saying right or wrong but these are things that start to process through my mind of like okay i just showed up on this call they are it was a head-on collision unfortunately the young man dies it's a powerful call for the firefighters that are here but if i post this and the mother or the father of this particular son sees, I'm not showing the body, but they know that's his blue car. They know that 100%. he was driving there. Yes. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to sit on these for a while. I think I'm not going to post this. And so there is that level of uh, through immaturity comes clarity. Yeah. And learning these things of like, man, we document a lot, but not everything needs to be shown right away in the moment. I so. This is this is that disconnect, though, where you and I are in the trenches and we do this. We understand that. Yep. And, and we carry a responsibility. For the average person, they don't put any thought to it. Mm -mm. They do not. It's, they hey, don't understand the ramifications. I'm going to get it. famous. Uh, that's it. Yeah. it's You know, and that's where in the beginning, right, like with social media and why it was so vilified in the fire service was because it was capturing all the wrong moments. Yep. And we did it for the shock and awe. We did it for the gotcha. We did it for the aha instead of documenting in the right way to promote the job. And for me, like when we started what we started, it was absolutely important that we were 100% authentic and fully transparent. And we were very protective of what we do. Mm. I am super protective of what we do because all it takes is one wrong step. Yep. All it takes is... 
putting myself first. And I know that this is not some grandioso bullshit. This is legit. Like, when you do it, I talk about this in my program, and I said, when you put the mission first, you'll never make the wrong decision. Hmm. It's only when you include yourself into the conversation will the prejudice of yourself interfere with the mission, and now your decisions are more about yourself and not the mission. Mm, that's but good. if you can put yourself in the mission and you can make every decision to promote the job, promote the mission, to protect the mission, you'll always make the right decision. Yep. And then You've having those couple guys that can that. always call you back to that too. Hey, Jeremy, the mission right. is this. I don't want to yeah, hear hey, that dummy. right now. Ah, I'm telling yeah. you. And either 100%. two things happen. We either take it down, we don't post it, or they come back two weeks later. Told you. <laughs> I've taken posts so. down. Yeah, same here. I haven't gotten it always right. Yeah. You know? And I'm just, now I'm more protective than ever when I involve people. Absolutely. Departments. You know, they don't, they don't, or they don't need to get shade because of something I did. Yep to promote my own agenda. That's just not how that works. That's where I think a lot of times slowing down and reminding ourselves like, okay, what is the mission of national fire radio? What is the mission mm -hmm. of this fire department? What is the mission of honor supply co? And as we talked about, and you mentioned it already on the podcast, what we say no to is what allows us to say yes to other things. And right. so it is that like everything has to come through the filter of the mission. Honor Supply Co. exists to honor firefighters by sharing what they do. Well, hey, I can share a lot of stuff that firefighters do that does not honor them. And so it's looking at it from that whole perspective of, hey, we share this to honor these guys. Let's look at it through that lens. And one of our core values is honor above all. Hey, th there could be growth from this post. There could be fame. There could be whatever. But... Mm honor is the first filter that we put everything through so we have to check ourselves on that we have to look at the mission and unfortunately we've gotten to a place the same thing that connected us is allowing us to grow that made you feel a certain way because you saw a photo unexpectedly is also the same tool that's causing a lot of people to look inwards let me post this dramatic stuff let Absolutely. me run to the clear fire scene i get to and show someone jumping out of a window and landing on the ground. Like, there's always going to be the negativity. And so the only way to combat that is showing the good. And I think in the fire service specifically, media is just now starting to recover from, hey, there's, there's firefighters that just bought these new phones. They have cameras on them, and they're showing a lot of stupid stuff. So sweeping SOPs and SOGs, we're shutting it down. Sure. No cameras. And uh, so you have the years of buffs. You can walk in fire halls, houses, departments, and you see like decades of history until like the late 90s, early 2000s. And then it's like, it stops. Hey, where's, where's, where did the, do we not have a photo book for this year or this decade? It's hilarious and to say this. It's because this there's awesome. like this clear stop. It was this, hey, we're done. I don't know how to manage it. I can't control it. Like I like to control everything. Now we're getting to, uh, larger departments issuing helmet cameras to their officers, putting uh, cameras at the front of rigs, allowing pictures as long as they go through a specific process and PIO to be vetted. Now making it part of the process. And now it's a part That's of the it. process. And now you have larger departments and some smaller are starting to do this. Hey, we're going to hire a full-time social media person, not just for recruitment, but like we miss this retention part of, hey, if you feel seen, if you feel valued, if you feel appreciated, you're probably going to stay where you are. On the flip side, it is, hey, I'm doing all this stuff and you don't give a rip about me. Actually, I do. Well, prove it. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a very. You, were you listening you to that. my podcast earlier today? I was not. I mean, we literally just <laughs> lit this whole topic up. Times 10, it's about departments going in on their people and making yeah. their people want to be there. And guys what, have more opportunity. Guys have more opportunities than ever today. Yes, if you're a firefighter require, today, you can go get a job anywhere. Like I could go sell, I could go sell Nikes online from the comfort of my bed and yes. make more money. Yep. It's no longer the job that provides a good paycheck and solid ben uh, bennies and and a and a you know a pension and this and that bullshit. Well, even departments Kids have more opportunities than ever today. Like if yeah. you want to be a yeah. firefighter, 
in South Carolina, there's an issue right now. Like we're not recruiting more firefighters. Firefighters are just going from one department to another because another department says that they're going to take care of them better. And so it's this growing thing of like, man, if you can show that you appreciate your people and you can show That's it right. where these people are, social media on the phone, it is this thing where it's like, well, man, even if the grass isn't greener there, which we all know it's not, they're doing a better job of controlling the narrative. And all I always bring up Cobb County as an example of this. If you go to Cobb County, Georgia's YouTube right now, they do a phenomenal job of showing these rescues, showing these grabs, using helmet cams, where if I'm a firefighter, I want to serve, I want to actually do the job, I want to go to calls. Man, I don't know anything other than Cobb, about Cobb, other than they make grabs. Like, Job County, I'm going over there. And they may pay less, they may have more politics, but from the outside looking in, hey, that's where I want to go because of this narrative that I've seen online. And it's You're damn yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Money's not the issue anymore. It's fulfillment no. and experience. And Give this, the people what they want. This. Like, yes. I do too. And that's where they want to serve. And uh, we get so scared of uh, well, what if so and so finds out this? What if so and so finds out that? If a department or any company really waits to mention things until they're on the defense, you've lost. Like, you're literally that's not driving right. the ball forward, you're being pushed back. If we get more intentional God, about narrating our true stories as a department, again, I'm not a firefighter right now. I am not on any particular department, so this isn't directed at anybody in specific. But if we got intentional on, hey, here's the difficulty of a CPAT. So from day one, I've never been in the fire service. I can Google and see that department A, B, and C is telling me that the CPAT's challenging. Man, that's where I want to go work. I don't want it to be soft. I don't want it easy. Like, let me go to that department that's, one, taking the time to educate me on the CPAT, but, two, they're challenging me. And then I can watch a couple of videos of a recruit class. Well, man, they educated me about the CPAT. Now I'm seeing the recruit class. It's two weeks longer than everybody else's because they take an extra week to do live burns. It's not just one, oh, wow, this department sounds awesome. And then you start to see Christmas dinners where all the kids are sitting on Santa Claus's lap. You start to see an Easter egg hunt at Station 1 at ABC Department. Like now the perception from the outside looking in is not, oh, well, did you see so-and-so? They, they pay $3,000 more. I think I'm going to go over there. Man, be transparent. Hey, we're not the highest paid department in our county, city, state. But instead of telling us or telling but you what we're we about, we do do this. Go That's look right. at our social media. Go see who we are. Go yeah. see our firefighters speaking about us versus just us doing it. And like, this is the disconnect that yes. departments and administrations and command staffs just don't understand. It's easier to point the finger and blame the younger generation for all the problems in the world. Meanwhile, they're not doing anything to mold, shift, or change the way they've done it to attract and keep the best yep. people they can. That's and it. most departments That's it. have on their staff, whether you're 24, 48, 48, 96, Kelly days, whatever, most departments have someone already within their department that would be capable of taking a phone, willing to volunteer their time to come in off shift and document the job and manage a social. But it's like, no, we're going to, we're going to go spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to a consulting firm to come in and tell us what we're doing wrong and uh, just sit down and be quiet. And it's like, guys, like we have people willing to do it. We have the tools and not throwing shade back and forth between generations, but it's taking a time to sit down and form the uh, SOPs and SOGs that empower these storytellers inside of departments to truly speak and show their department's yeah. strengths. Instead is, this hey, I don't is, understand is, that. We're not going to do it. I don't understand is, it. Yeah, this is where the rubber meets the road. Yep. Like what we're talking about right now is the new way. It's the new generation. It's the new blueprint foundation from which we have to build from. Yep. And we don't have people in decision-making roles to understand this conversation. And guys like you and I who live this every single day through what we're doing, we understand this and we have a job in front of us to educate and promote this narrative because they have to understand that. The only way we're going to make this job better and to do our part is to educate on the things that we know about. 
Mm-hmm. We have to get this message out there. It and where so we are important. slightly, I, I think where our responsibility comes in though is you're not coming from a place of, hey, I've never been on a fire apparatus. I've never been on the fire ground and I'm gonna sell you media. I'm gonna sell you a social media package. Like there are a lot of companies encroaching and, and trying to capitalize on the fire services interest in social media and storytelling. 100%. With 100%. very little experience in the fire service world. And so uh, on the flip side of it, you have guys like yourself, me, who I was only a firefighter for less than 18 months. I have very little knowledge, but I know where not to stand to get hit with <laughs> straight stream. I know sure. where not to, uh, I know collapse zones. I know these different things. So you can show up with a different perspective, but in a trustworthy way. And uh, man, I think there's a firefighter in South Florida named Rick Stevens. And uh, some of the content he's created with Miami Dade is like, man, mm -hmm. here's a national department. That is like they posted a job opportunity the other day for like a social media coordinator. And I wholeheartedly though think that it's because Rick's experience in the fire service, experience with the task force, that whenever he's sharing these stories, it's not from a reporter that's trying to share a story of the chaos. It's from a firefighter's perspective that is genuinely trying to show the fire service in the very best of it. And like that's where one for insurance purposes, but two, from trust, even as we start to build on our supply co and we're recruiting other firefighters, man, you might be the best CrossFit photographer in the world. You could have the most amazing landscape photos of places all over the, the entire world. But if you've never been on a fire truck, if you've never been to a fatality, if you've never been to a house fire, I love you. I think your photos are great, but I, I don't, it's not that I don't trust you but it's you're missing something. I'm not gonna hold it against you. I'm not gonna say that you're a bad person, but the ability to tell stories like we're telling and to capture the images, even to ask questions on the podcast, there's an experience that you have to have to keep the uniqueness, to keep the, like, again, going back to trust and authenticity, man, you, you just, only through experience can you uh, talk about certain things. You, you can't, skew the conversation the yeah. only way you can come off and protect the integrity it's all about protecting the integrity of the fire service yep so the fire service has to become the priority it's not you all these consulting companies all these companies out there that want to give you social media help your fire department grow in your recruitment campaigns they're all full of shit because all <laughs> yes. they care about is their bottom line they don't care if you get the best candidates for those jobs they don't care they're not going to give you anything in the sauce like i talk about the sauce i'm a new jersey mm. guy italian right like i'm not italian but i grew Let's up in, a, in italian neighborhoods and i go to the best italian restaurants and everybody's got the sauce yep but grandma's is always better it's and because grandma be. has spent and it always will be and it's because she has spent the time to put the right recipes with the right amount of love and compassion that goes into hand squishing the plum tomatoes instead of using a mixer or using there's all these different things in the recipe anybody can make the sauce but not every sauce is as good as grandma's yep and my point of that is is that it takes people from within that are protecting the integrity of this job that are protecting everything that has come before them taking that packaging it up and putting it out there to push this job forward and the only way that works is when you put that mission over your own needs mm. over your own pockets i said that before you'll never make the wrong decision if you always put the mission first it goes to the photos you produce and put out can i put this one out should i not put this one out you're putting the mission first yep we get in trouble when we put ourselves in front of what the mission is and it doesn't mean that you don't take care of yourself. And it doesn't mean that you don't count. But when it comes to making an impact in the fire service and protecting the integrity and pushing this job forward and being able to have a community that trusts in what you're doing, it's because you're doing it right by protecting the integrity of the fire service. That's Absolutely. it. And so many people cannot, and this is a beautiful way to like kind of bring it back around. So many people cannot put something else before their own needs. Hmm.
That's it. Yep. Nailed That's it. what this conversation was today, Chance. Yep. Exactly. That's and what I this think... conversation was. We started off by telling and talking about this and what you do on Honor Supply Co. and what it's designed to do. It's not about you. You get fulfillment and excitement through it. Will it pay the bills? Yes, maybe, eventually, or it is now. I don't know. But we know it's not d designed and developed for that sake. It's yep. designed and developed to protect the integrity of pushing this job forward by documenting the people that love this job so much. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. And that comes the trick I'm of... Uh... And you're experiencing this right now with the growth of National Fire Radio and starting to do other podcasts and the size up and stuff like that and the different services that you're providing. If the mission truly is about other people and doing other things, man, there comes this awkward point of like, we have to grow. And uh, mm -hmm. so going back to grandma and the sauce, man, that sauce is the best sauce in the world. Like it is, it is good. But if you're not one of the 12 to 20 people sitting around grandma's table, you're missing out on one of the greatest sauces on the planet. And so I do think there's this like unique spot of, uh, hey, how can I get more people to experience the sauce? How can we start to build a team? How can we do things? And with that growth, you would get someone that's like, oh, well, grandma sold out. She done partnered with Sauce R Us and she's going national. Well, yeah, if maybe. the mission is still the same, if there's still the checks and balances there where someone can say, hey, 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 one, you talk about my grandma, I'm going to punch you in the face. Two, grandma is doing this not to make money. She's going to make money and she's going to be rewarded, but she's doing it so that more people get to experience a hearty meal around a table that she couldn't do by herself. Like, I think that's where National Fire Radio is starting to grow. Honor Supply Co. is starting to grow. What you're saying is, hey, don't take your focus off the mission. And for us, it would be easy for me to hire a lot of other seasoned photographers that are better than me that could create content that would put us on the front of magazines tomorrow. But it's like, hey, that's not the mission. Like, it's not to be the best photographer. That was never the mission. Our mission from day one, and you can scroll all the way back to early social media, was to become the most trusted photographer on the fire ground. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's not about money. It's not about fame. It's not about magazines. We want to be the most trusted. Well, why do we want to do that? So that we can honor firefighters before they die. Well, how are you doing that? By sharing what they do. And so like, as long as we keep this vision and mission, the front and center, well, now we can start to grow. And there's going to be growing pains. There's going to be awkwardness. There's going to be stepping into arenas that we know nothing about. There's going to be bringing trusted advisors on that let us down. Like it's going to suck, but there's also going to be a lot of good. There's also going to be, we've created this little pocket right now of like a bunch of East coast stuff and firefighters on the East coast being celebrated. But man, what about the line of duty death in California this week? I didn't take that firefighters photo. And so the only way to get to more places and document the hundreds of thousands of firefighters who are quietly doing the job with their head down, focused on the mission of their department and the fire service in general to truly tell their stories. It's bigger than me. And like, that's why we wave the flag of honor supply is it's, Hey, let's keep building this thing. Mission focused. It's funny. You keep saying mission. Cause if you look on our website, we are very bold in saying that we are a mission focused media company. Let's keep that the forefront and then see what happens. Buckle up. <laughs> it's going to get bumpy at times. It's going to be smooth at times, but it's well, got to be about and, the mission, and that's, man. Brother, you and I talked about this when we were last together, and yep. we talked about scaling. You know, like any business, you scale. And with Grandma Sauce, eventually, if it's that good, it's going to scale. Yeah. The problem is, is how do we scale to protect the integrity of what we're building? Yep. And for me, this is, you know, full transparency, which I always talk about, but that's one of the biggest struggles with National Fire Radio. I could have taken every opportunity years ago to scale this much quicker. And I could have, you know, had money infused in really quickly and probably would have changed our focus. Probably mm -hmm. wouldn't have been able to build the trust or the network that we've built and the relationships that I have today if I sped up the process. 
easy is you know easy is is fast fast yeah. is easy right slow is hard and i i look at like everything is a long game and we want to sprint more than ever we want satisfaction today not many people are willing to put the time in to have the long game and grandma's sauce became grandma's sauce because she had to become a grandmother yeah it takes time it takes generations to build yep. grandma's sauce to where it is now grandma might sell to sauces are us <laughs> i can promise you we'll never be the same again correct but maybe she did that maybe she protected that or did that for the family so the family would have wealth or or fulfill needs or maybe there was no legacy to carry on that sauce and so she wanted to who knows what the backstory is but the thing is this grandma's sauce is at the table Yep. It's organic. You can come taste it anytime you want. Share that with your friends. Share that. Open the door. Make it organic and invite people in. I think there's so many parallels to that. Scaling is challenging. Scaling is scary, and you're going to deal with that with Honor Supply Co. You're dealing with it now. I deal with it with National Fire Radio every single day. We have some projects coming up that I have to put a tremendous amount of trust and belief in other people that they can fairly represent what I think we stand for. And I have to be very protective of that. And I also have to be willing to shut that down yeah. if it doesn't follow through on what I require. Absolutely. And that Mission lies first. the uh, responsibility of founder, visionary. Like it's, we can often be referred to as pompous or arrogant or mean, cold-hearted. You're, you're not including everybody. Hey, I love you guys. I love everybody. But no. And I'm going to say no to you because if I say yes, people are going to stop saying yes to me. And so that's that's yep. where we are. There's a lot to that, brother. It is. Chance Craven, Honor Supply Co. Bro, I thank you, man. What I, a great conversation as always. I appreciate the time, sir. Looking forward to the next time I see your face in person. No, we got to do more of this. I like this. This is, I mean, in person, it's great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I mean, I'll take an Uber ride from you to the airport anytime. <laughs> I appreciate that. But I, I just think, like, you know, we have the ability today to do this. Yep. And I think, you know, you and I, we talked, and when we, when we met face-to-face, -face, we had, I'm telling you, it was a memorable weekend for me. The conference was great. It was more memorable, you and I, really diving in on some topics. And we literally had just met. Absolutely. And it's, I said that earlier on in this conversation, that when you find – people that challenge you when you find people that you respect and you see what they're doing it makes me want to be better and i i think i even said to you there were like things that you were doing and i was like super jealous of i was like i love that it's a great idea like yeah. i love that do it but i'm also your biggest fan like and that's part of this back and forth give and yep. take it's it's relationships it's friendships it's brotherhood it's i'm happy for you like and we want that for each other like that's important well, that's, that's what the 20,000 foot mission is to leave the fire service better than we found it. It's cliche. 100%. Everybody says it. But whenever it really boils down to that, you and I talked about it. You're not intimidated, afraid, worried that other fire service podcasts are starting. I'm not losing sleep I that other it. photographers are out there honoring firefighters. I have friends that are firefighter coaches and helping people through fitness. They're not worried that five more firefighter fitness pages started yesterday. Like... There's more people that can be served than any one of us can serve ourselves. And so it's like, hey, instead of, again, going back to core values, one of ours is negative Nancy's not allowed on the bus. We're not going to sit around and bash other people and talk about other people. It's literally, hey, yeah, I saw them. I heard about them. Um, they, they don't affect me. I'm not worried about what they're doing. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I wish them all the best luck. Oh, they said this about you. Cool. That doesn't prevent me from accomplishing my mission. And uh, I think that's where whenever it comes back to integrity and time, you and I aren't, we, through our truck ride, we make money in a lot of similar ways and uh, provide our, our family financially stability in a lot of similar ways. Yet here we are on the, a podcast, encouraging each other, talking about each other. There was even a moment where I'm like, I wouldn't want to do that. I'd want to give it to you. And you were like, well, I wouldn't want to do that. I'd want to give that money to you. And it's... Man, it's not a competition. It's it's not when it's mission focused. Yep. And the guys that compete with one another, when I see podcasts pop up, I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> Good. 
Great. Yeah. And people are like, oh, another one popped up. Another one popped up. I'm like, great. Yeah. I'm like, great. Let them get, get to it. four or 500 episodes like I've gotten to. Yep. Go get it. Like, I hope, I hope that you guys crush it because it means that you're doing it better than I am. And if you're doing it better than I am, I better hold myself accountable, pick up my game, stop being complacent, find new ways to innovate, or I'm dead. Yeah. That's life. That's life. That's life. The entitlement comes from when you think you're deserved. When you deserve, get the get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. Yep. Life doesn't owe us anything. That is the problem. I've worked hard for the last five years. You owe me. I don't. Nobody owes me anything. <laughs> yep. You know, if National Fire Radio were to fold up tomorrow, I have some of the best friends of my life that I've made over the last few years. I have incredible fulfillment. I have opportunities to meet people like you. I win. I don't care if I have seven zeros in my bank account. Yep. It doesn't matter to me. It's not about from, that. It is about. Like I think what's so unique about even that once. statement, though. What, what's so unique about that is if it all shut down tomorrow, you would have those friends. You, you would have those relationships. I win. And I win. I'm teaching both my boys that money's valuable, but relationships are the most valuable currency in the world. And the reason that you have those is because you've made the investments. Even this, the reason that we're here is because both of us paid, spent the time, and did the work to be in a city and state that neither one of us live in, and we connected. And then we connected again in another completely different state in the middle of the country, again. And it's like, if I could encourage anybody that wants to better the fire service, your existence does not improve anything. Your effort changes everything. And you have to show up and not be like, well, hey, I'm here, serve me. No, man, that's not how it works. And I think the beautiful right. thing of what you and I get to do in traveling around, is like there's this fallacy right now of like, man, all firefighters are the same. Horse shit. Like if you're telling me that if you lined up firefighters, even at your current department, on a wall like they're in a jail, and told me to pick the ones that you wanted to come save you, you're not picking everybody on the wall. Like you're not. No. It's because certain people show up day in and day out. They do the work. They do the hard stuff. They're there for the mission. They are there to better themselves. And that is like the, uh, where I get really excited, even about these conversations and you talking about like more of this is, man, there are so many small moments right now where a firefighter from Greenville meets a firefighter from Orlando and in a very small, intimate conversation, not a conference with 2,000 people, not the big show with vendors everywhere, this one conversation, the firefighter comes back to Greenville and he's like, you know what, I'm going to work out today. Gear is the greatest equalizer. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to stop complaining about the guys that I work with that don't work out, and I'm going to get after it because I met one person that encouraged me. And so it is this stuff and these tools that give us the ability to say, Hey man, I see what everybody else is doing. I see what everything else is becoming. What are you doing? How are you changing? How are you improving? Not just existing, but what are you doing? What are you investing in? And for you, that's been National Fire Radio. And I told you the moment you asked me to get on here, man, this is not something I take lightly. Not because of how many followers you have, not because of how many people may listen to this, but I do not take for granted the work that has gone into getting to this place where two people from different walks of life can sit down and talk. I didn't do all that work. You did, and you've built the platform, and now I get to ride those coattails. Like, man, that no. is, that's. I disagree. Ah. I disagree. Don't, dis don't discredit your own work. Yeah. Well, don't discredit it. Not doing that, because there is, you don't allow anybody on the podcast, but it is that thing where. We, we live in this society where, does Jeremy not know who I am? Why has he not invited me on the podcast yet? Like, this is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Like, it's, That's it's ridiculous. this, it is this scenario of uh, helping each other I don't know if and that being exists. appreciative for I don't it. know if that exists or not. I don't know if that, if that conversation exists or not, but I'll say this. I'm grateful it does. Yep. And I'm grateful that there's people out there that I'm still finding through National Fire Radio that have a story or experiences to share. You know, you are a guy that we connected right away and there was this instant connection and I was honored to have you on and, and to, to capture this story because selfishly you pushed me to be better. Hmm. And so I need that. And I'd like to think 
that after this conversation, I'm pushing you to be better. You are. Right? The only reason I'm talking to this microphone is because you pushed me to be better. The only reason I have this light above my head is because you gave me an opportunity to be better. And so you are accomplishing the mission day in and day out. I'm proud to know you, sir. Then, then I win. Yep. We win. The that's mission right. wins. And, and that is like, that's what I want people to understand is that it is just, it's just that. It can be everything else but you, and because it's everything else but you, you are good. Yeah. And that, I'm going to take that, thank you for sharing that. Like, the fact that, you know, you got a microphone, and you put a light up, and you put yourself on camera, yeah. and you're in front of the lens instead of behind the so lens. Awkward. If I had a small part, if I had a small, if I had a small part in that, then I did my, I did my job today. Yep. 100%. Because you have value to add. You have experience and knowledge to bring. You're making the fire service better. And so if I pushed you to get it uncomfortable to share that, I did my job. That's it. Did, did a good job. Now of we're it, done. Sir. We're done. Now we're done. Mic drop. Chance Craven, Honor Supply Co. Bro, where can people find you, see your content? Where? What's best for communication? I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to reach out to you. Honor um, Supply Co. How do they connect with you? Yeah. It um uh, that website has all our social on it. We're in the process of updating it where it gets some more albums, but there's thousands and thousands of photos on there of uh, firefighters doing what they do and us honoring them by sharing it. Um, and then on Instagram, Honor Supply Co. Facebook, Honor Supply Co. Just Google Honor Supply and you will find us. That's fantastic. Uh, it should be said, you guys do a uh, publication as well, right? We are getting there. It um uh, first one goes okay. to print in May. We started That's it exciting. in February. It is called the Honor Journal. This will be, oh. I think, the first publication in the fire service where we talk about everybody but ourselves. And uh, so it's stories of uh, Buzz, the fire photographer in Columbia that was doing this for 50 years before us. And him being quoted as his only rule was that he would never take a penny. And he broke that rule twice because he was published in a magazine and they sent him money. And so it's stories like that of people that have been doing this long before us, but honoring them and then uh, different fire, a lot of images, um, but it costs $17 and awesome. 36 cents a month, giving some honor back to Mr. Benjamin Franklin and starting the first fire service in 1736. Yes, sir. And with that comes some different benefits, but yes, we are, Print is not dead. We're creating a print publication that I don't will be shipped so. out in May. That's exciting. Congratulations with that. Thank and you, sir. Congratulations on all the success of what you're building. You're doing it right, pal, and Teamwork. that's why it's happening. So I appreciate it. Proud to know you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a friend. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it, man. Guys, Chance Craven, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Chance, don't go anywhere. Stay right where you are. I'm going to sign off the podcast like I always do. I want to come right back to you. Thank um, you, Jeremy. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Another incredible episode of the National Fire Radio Podcast. Chance Craven, Honor Supply Co., a new friend of mine, and I think he's going to be a longtime friend. And uh, I value and appreciate those relationships. They mean everything to me, and that's truly why I do a lot of what I do. It makes me better. So that's my selfish, my selfish plug. Um, do me a favor. Take this conversation, take it back to the firehouse and talk about it, because I truly believe that when we talk about the job, we're making the job better. Uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Jeremy, National Fire Radio. National Fire Radio.